Hello, hello. What's good, everyone? I am uh, your friend, your girl, Miss Julie Black, and I'm joined by my homie. Introduce yourself. I'm Derek Bryn. How you doing? So good. So, good. so I mean, out there in the space where you're representing, would love to know your city, your country, your province, your favorite food. Just drop it in the chat. Let's just let's get this thing, this party going. Um, very, very excited to be here on this last Saturday. It's nice to be able to share this time um, with Derek. You know, we, yes, in this, pandemic, in this pandemic, we still get to do <laughs> what we what we love to do. So, we'll um, mm -hmm. before I go into my spiel. Is there anything you want to say to the audience before we uh, jump it off? Um, let's introduce ourselves for those that don't know us. Um, I'm Derek Brand. I'm a music producer, born and raised in Toronto, Caribbean family. So I've come back and forth between Toronto and the Caribbean. And I started as a musician, got into television, got into performing and touring as a musician. And then that evolved into producing records and composing and writing and traveling like a madman. Um, and <laughs> many years of you know, developing artists from Toronto, like the Keisha Shantes and the Dream Warriors and like way back and, you know, and then doing a lot of work just everywhere. But Toronto has always been a base. Um, and then I got into writing a lot of music for TV, which evolved into placing songs into TV. And, you know, now, oh, aside from artist development, I for labels, I got into now I'm just kind of developing my own artists and trying to create my own sound and, and expand and that's what we do you know now and through pandemic you know this is my studio yeah <clears throat> gone from wow. a big studio to a little studio but you know we still do what we do yeah what do you what do you find the difference as far as the creativity with the big studio versus little video studio um for me personally not a whole lot but i do find okay, as a producer i've always kind of put thrown that question to artists do you prefer to be in the big studio or the small because some artists like just to sit on a stool and, and sing into a microphone in the room. Some artists feel elated or better when they're in a vocal booth and they feel special. Um, but it doesn't really affect the creative process to me because I still, <laughs> funny enough, some of my bigger records I produced on a couch or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Um, we, were, we were talking yesterday about those humble beginnings, about yes. the Atlanta, yes. Jersey, <laughs> New York. Yeah. Please. Yeah, we have some interesting parallels and common denominators where, you know, you, I remember like back in the day, like you were doing your thing here, but then you started going over to Atlanta and just killing it, like just going back and forth. And, but you found from what I, from the outside, from what I saw, you found a connection with a certain, either a, a person or a producer or something, and you just followed it. And you followed, you, you know, that's where it led you. You know, God leads us in different ways. And, and, to me, and one of the things I'll probably say later is, you know, follow your your heart, like sometimes. And for me, my path led me to New York. So I was doing stuff with K Cuts you know, Brothers and Main Source and those guys. And I eventually got management in New York. And then that fell apart, but it led me to LA. <laughs> so I moved to LA. I just kept following these little paths. And every time something bad happened, it opened up a new door. <laughs> You know, like for example, you know, I, my partner had a, a publishing deal, which led me over to LA. And when that fell apart, everyone was like, "Okay, well, you're you know what you're doing. Why don't you stay?" And, you know what I mean? Like, so sometimes these bad doors open up good doors. And then the big thing in LA is I got management out there. Funny enough, from somebody that used to live in Toronto, and then she connected me with Diane Warren. So then I was programming for Diane Warren. And D. Roche, which is one of her producers. So that to me, that was like the biggest thing. Of course. Um, Diane Warren, she's the everything. Yeah. Godmother. So here's this little Toronto kid you know, running the streets of LA, hustling like an engineer. And I got this gig. And I'm like, okay, I'm there. I'm doing it. So again, like these little paths, you know, open up other doors. Um, and that actually led to to the po I did one song on the Pokemon soundtrack for the first movie, which was one of my biggest <laughs> ever things yeah. again little things open doors to bigger things so Absolutely. here i am back in toronto trying to do the same thing and you know we've got a sound here we've got a thing here 
We yeah. sure do. We sure do. Well, that's a good that's a good segue, actually. A lot of people are saying where they're from, Toronto, New York, Toronto via Columbia, Calgary, Toronto again, Ajax, all types. So that's so that's awesome. So keep keep dropping where you're repping. Oh, there um, we are, there we are. I wasn't yeah. seeing that. Yeah, 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 yeah. On the hop inside. So I really wanted to dive into um, I can really I can really have experience hearing not sure why um but um we can really go into the technical and get a manager get a deal and the publishing and all that stuff but for me where i've landed in my life on today at 10 14 on today is really establishing and understanding that the why that i set when i was 12 years old i'm now 43 um is the same intention it's the same why that fuels me today and so for those artists out there that are looking to get into the business or you're already in the business and you're kind of wherever you might be in your headspace i really want to invite you to think about your intention why why you want to be in the business or why you need a manager why you may not need a manager for me uh, when i was 12 years old my sister passed away and so I knew, and I was living in the Jane Finch community, and which was fine. You know, the, the news said what it said, um, but there was so much. I all of who I am came from Jane and Finch. All of who I am is because of where I was raised, and um, and how I was raised, and the community, and realizing that I wanted to move my mom out the hood at twelve. I knew. All right, how how can I do that? What's going to get me there? I happen to have talent. Yes. But when you have something to really focus on outside of money, then that's gonna that's still fueling me 26, 27 years later. And so, mm -hmm. so I went through different rounds of having managers, you know, and there were certain key managers that really were anchors in my life. You know, I had Chase Parsons, I could say his name out loud, because I mean he he managed me since I, when I was 16 to about 23 or 24. You know what I, I mean? Like Cardi and socks and the whole bunch of us, but as I as you know, time went on and deals came and went. Um, I've been managing myself for the last twelve years. In fact, I don't have I've never, I don't have a key manager, but I have a squad, I have a team, and so what I want to speak to is, uh, especially for Black artists, and be very specific about about Black right now, is to really get your business in order, get your books in. For example, if you if you don't file your taxes in your personal life. Then you you sure as hell ain't gonna do it in your business. You got everything has to match. How you do one thing is how you do everything. How you do one thing is how you do everything. I'm gonna say it one more time. How you do one thing is how you do everything, right? And so, you know, we could speak on how to find management, but what I recognize is it's when you're ready for it, management. Will, this is my opinion anyway. Management will basically find you based on your work ethic based on what you're, how you're putting, where you're placing yourself and positioning yourself. Um, I sang everywhere. I got my first deal, my first publishing deal with Warner Chapel singing at the Bamboo in Toronto on Queen Street. <laughs> I had three songs only to my name and I performed at a Canadian Music Week. I was like 19. And John Tita, who was the president at the time, saw me, he was sitting at the bar, he looked over his shoulder, his own words, he came up, got on his knee, Took my hand, he might have been a little tipsy, but still, kiss my hand. <laughs> I'm not worthy. Did you write those songs? I'm not worthy. Did you write those songs? Yes, I did. I want to offer you a deal. That's how serendipitous it was. I wasn't shopping it, I didn't do any of that. I mean, I'm, I have favor, I'm blessed. I'm gonna put this in the screen. Yes, I keep this with me. Favor <laughs> ain't fair. Favor ain't fair. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to really touch on this the human side, the spirit side. Um, <laughs> Where in this day and age, with so much technology, the opportunity is endless. We're a neighborhood, but there's also a lot more um, traffic in the in the music business. There's a lot more opportunities, a lot more artists, there's a lot more noise. So how do you differentiate yourself from what's out there already? And uh, for me, it's all it comes down to my storytelling. It comes down to really. Um, being truly authentically Julie, truly Julie. I could say this now, 26 years later, but if I were to come in now, if I could kind of put myself in the in the mind of like a, a, a brand new 
young artists, um, I, I think it'd be an exciting time because you could reach anybody at any time in a, a click of a mouse. So it's basically now mm -hmm. what you're going to do with it. You know what I mean? There's another thing I wanted to touch on. Um, and and it has to do with um, privilege. It has to do with privilege. You know, being able to stand in the gap for one another, especially for those artists. And, and for myself, I have many friends in this business that are of different races and cultures. And so, especially in the light of the last year, for me, I've really been establishing my relationships, reestablishing my relationships and saying, hey, okay, so we've been rocking together for X amount of time, or I've known you for X amount of time. And now that I have the freedom to really speak from my heart and soul, it's like, hey, are you comfortable using your privilege to, um, to further expand black artists, black music, black business, all of that stuff, you know what I mean? Because really, there, it's not it's not enough to just be my homie. It's not enough to just say, "Yep, I support you," and I want to see you win. I need to see action now, and um, it's very, very. It's that time. It's that time, and it's in love, and it's. Uh, I'm so excited to be in that space where I can say, "Hey, all right, white homie, knock that door. I don't want you to give me the job, but." You could open that door. Give me the interview, I'll get the job. Give me the opportunity, I'll knock it out the ballpark. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's it's the season of boldness and and loving. You don't have to do it in rage. You don't have to be all angry and all that, none of that. But I think it's time to be bold. It's definitely time to be bold. And um, um, I also wanted to share that uh, that you need to expand your, your, your portfolio. I do many things. Call me at Iman from In Living Color, how she's like, hey, I have 10 jobs. God, <laughs> man. <laughs> you know, uh, but yeah. the truth is I have now mastered being an entrepreneur and I love it. You see the power of step behind me, that's my step business. And in the last year, I call it Corona creativity. <laughs> if you have not, and you can still start, but I'm gonna st say this quote and I want you to write it down. Or maybe want somebody from the team put it in the chat. A year from now, you'll be happy that you started today. A year from now, you'll be happy that you started today. Whatever it is, do not procrastinate anymore. It's yeah. time to eradicate procrocrastination. This is a, yeah. it's, it's an even highway now, Derek, like ages yeah. of, you right? Even that's yeah. gone, you know what I mean? No, and write it down. You know, when you make a plan and, and actually write it, like I, I feel like those are the real the real plans that actually turn into something because a lot of us do what we do and you know we dilly dally, we go all over the place, we do 19 different things. But when you actually have it written down, it becomes a plan and you can look at it and you're like, okay, this is what I'm trying to do. Like whether it's set a goal, like I want to get a publishing deal. Well, maybe not in six months, but maybe in 12 months. So that's the 12 month goal. But in between you have short term goals that you know you can chop, 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 get to them so that those other ones lead you to that publishing deal. But you still have that as a, as a, a written long term goal, you know, yeah. maybe getting a record deal. And but a lot of us do kind of especially as creative minded people, we're not organized. A lot of us. So that's one of those places that management does come which I'll, I'll get i'll go back in a second but i want to tap on something you said i think you know as artists like i'm a producer you're an artist but all of us uh, you know coming through this this whole world of entertainment i think people resonate to like the realness of somebody like their authenticity so when you're trying to find yourself and find things and oh i need this and oh i need that you know like with managers they find you People resonate to like authenticity. Like again, find you, like listen to music that's authentic. Don't just talk about crap. Don't follow social media in the sense like, oh, this person's doing it, so I'm gonna do it. Um, look at like random artists, okay, like Cardi B. You may or may not like her, but she's real. And because she's real, in all her craziness, people like her, mm -hmm. they're real. They, you know, And then there's other songwriters that write about mental health and things like that. People resonate to them because they're being real. Yeah. And, you know, I used to develop a lot of rappers back in the day and they come in talking about dubs and 22. I'm like, you're 16 years old. Come on. <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> um, but I, I find the rappers, you know, look at like Drake for a, a good example, where a guy, some people want to hit on Drake, some people love Drake. My observation, you know, as a singer, your your instrument is your voice. For me, it's the music. For a rapper, it's not the microphone; it's your lyrics and your wordplay. Drake is is you know he's from Canada. He's Caribbean. He's articulate. He's educated. When he raps, you hear what he says. You understand. So when someone like Drake would go up against somebody else, in a sense, on like how people have these conversations, well, Drake is an intelligent, articulated human being. You can't if you're if you don't have that those word skills, and you're real. Drake speaks sings about real shit. You know, he's not following ego or cliche. Like he, you know, he talks about what the girls want, <laughs> and the girls like it. But he's being real. You know, I know, like, you know, we all know Drake, like, from back in the day. You know, he's really that guy, you know, he's got a girlfriend, he's going to take her, pay for her hair done, da, da 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 He's done that shit. We know it. So he sings about it. So his authenticity I, I, comes I, I, out. Let me jump in on that for a hot second, because yeah, um, I think that the art starts with the artist, right? Yeah. And if you even that in itself, the first yeah. word in artist is art. Yeah. And too many opinions, you could put this one down to everybody, too many <laughs> opinions lessen the art. Yes. And so we could sit down and break down what we think an artist was thinking of when they wrote that song or <laughs> what they did, but nobody knows but the artist. And I think it's a, a, a waste of time at times, the most valuable commodity that we have to offer. In banter and fun, we can go back and forth. That's fun. It's banter. It's just like barbershop yeah. talk. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> but as we're trying to figure out who's the realist and ain't the realist, their bank is, they stacking. They're stacking. Their bag is full. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the, I have this, I have this thing called, um, I got it off of this pastor, Pastor Torre Roberts out of L.A., one church and he, he broke down something called prime time and mean time and as we sit in our meantime though i put on some lipstick today and got my hair dead for this you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. as we sit in our meantime looking on social media at people's prime time how many mm -hmm. filters how much how many how long did it take for that post to actually go up okay mm -hmm. We, we, we click into comparison-itis. That's an itis. Mm -hmm. yeah. Comparison-itis is the thief of your destiny. It is the thief of your purpose. It is the thief of your joy, comparison-itis. Because there's, no, one, there's one Julie, there's one Derek, there's one Aisha, Chris, Golden Rules. <laughs> you know That's what I mean? Chris Ray. Kara, <laughs> Destiny. All the gold, yeah. all the John Coffee. There's only one. There's one Latoya, right? There's one. God broke the mold. Bam! After He made us, and so, you know, uh, my mom used to say this, and I, I, I keep it in my heart. God rest her soul. That everybody ages, but not everybody grows up. True. Everybody ages, but not everybody grows up, and that's the thing about the business is that it could keep you in a, a very young mindset and vibe. I, I feel as young as I when I first started. However, we have to have our own voice and establish our own voice enough to say, hey, you know what? Well, no, maybe I don't want to wear that. Or maybe I don't want to write about that. Or, hey, this is my to your point, Derek. This is my true voice. You know, no matter how much Drake might have been. Look at the early. He's, he's over a decade in now. Yeah. He's over a decade in now. Like, 08 was, I think, when I went to mixtape, 07, 08. You know what I mean? Like, we're 2021. And <laughs> so the results is another one you could write down. I'm, I love quotes. That's a mantra. Yeah. That type of person. <laughs> the results are 100% in the routine. The results are in the routine. If I want to lose five pounds, yeah. it's going to be what routine on a granular level is going to set me up to, to lose those five pounds. If I need to expand my lung capacity, sing higher. When I did Carolina Change last year, a year to now, exactly, the theater production, one Adora for it, holla. But um, I took 14 months to actually expand my vocal range. I, my agent had to take me off the road. 
I had to have a sleep schedule. I had to talk to my nutritionist about my what I'm going to be eating to become this character that needs to sing higher than I that I typically than I typically sing. They had to move me downtown. So I actually was living downtown for three months. So if you think about these things where, and what they paid me was good, but it wasn't what, for all the things that I said I need to really do this role in excellence as a master, I got to the point in my life where I knew what I needed. So you have to really follow those Hansel and Gretel crumbs. Like if you're always losing your voice or you're, you're waking up and you're tired, or like you got to establish a routine. This is life. Look at Aretha Franklin. Look at now rapper. Look at Jay and them. They're like going to be 50. J-Lo celebrating 50. A lot of you on here might be in your 20s, 30s. You know, I'm in my 40s. But ultimately, there's no retirement in this mm -hmm. business. There should be no retirement. Well, passion doesn't retire. You know what I mean? It doesn't. But you can look broke up. Yeah. On the floor. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yep. So I have lots of peers who are still passionate in the and still producing and still writing and still singing, yep. but they haven't taken care of their temple. They haven't taken yep. care of their, their their talent enough, where it will make room for you. That's what it says. I'm a Christian. It says your gift will make room for you. Your yep. gift self care will you if you take care of it. Self care, self love, huge. Right. You know, right. most of the times that we've done major artist development situations, they all included self-care, fitness, mental wellness, because, you know, as well, here we are in 2021, people are just starting to understand and figure out certain things about mental health and things like that. And they're real. They're very real. They affect us in, in ways that, that we don't know. You know, I, I have someone in my family that I take care of that, that deals with it. And I watch. You can't help that stuff. But you know, all these different things that we do, like, you know, going back to what you said, routine. It's crucial, crucial. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. It's excellent. Do you want to speak right. about um, dipping into um, songwriting and music rights and stuff? Um, sure. Um, you know, one of the things, you know, going back to like Drake and stuff like that, um, as a music composer, I was placing a lot of music into TV and stuff like that. And I learned... You know, slowly that if I don't handle my publishing and all this other stuff that uh, you know I'm losing money and it's not like someone's taking it it just goes up into the clouds so you know one of the things that I'll even tell people is you know you've got music and how do you make money and what I do with it well you know you make relationships with music supervisors and nowadays like I was a composer way back and I used to be hired to write TV shows but that stopped because now you know you watch all these reality shows it's just little one drop little beats and things like that so you know, as a as an artist, uh, as a creator, as a producer, make relationships with these music supervisors, and they're the ones responsible for placing music. Um, and I give you a direct example. I placed about I don't know twenty something songs in Degrassi, and that didn't come from me composing. That came from a relationship with the music supervisor. And you know, they they reach out to us creatives. So when you build these relationships, you get an email that says, "Hey, we're looking for some songs for Flashpoint or for this TV show." And and these are opportunities that you can create for yourself that will actually add to your to your um <laughs> your portfolio of how you make money in music cuz not like as Julie said and we all will say there's not just one place we make money you know we we're, we're entrepreneurs and that's you know that's that's how you succeed in life like any any if you know any hugely successful wealthy money manager they don't just put their money in one place it's like 10 15 20 <laughs> So, right. I mean, with the music supervisor thing, I think that's a great way to, to kind of to just add to your, your, your portfolio. But going back to the mechanical, mechanicals of it, where, you know, you write songs, you sit in a room with one or two or three people, you know, have those conversations of what the math is. I wrote 50, you wrote 50. Because sometimes when you have those conversations after the fact, somebody's like, no, you didn't write 50. I wrote 60. I wrote 75. And then these fights happen. And like, no, have those conversations in the beginning. Even sometimes before you write a song that says, you know, hey, you know, we're going to sit in a room. You're the music person. I'm the lyric person. But, you know, let's try and do this 50-50. But if one person writes a little more, then let's have that conversation. And then we register it equally. And then going from there, like, and that's important because a lot of people don't have those conversations. Yeah. Um, and I'll even say, you know, in the Caribbean market and in the urban hip hop market, that was a big problem. For music supervision because when i placed these songs in what was the caribbean show that you sang theme on with um oh the kink of my hair 
Kink in My Hair. I placed 20 something songs in the Kink in My Hair. And a lot of that was because a lot of the Caribbean and urban songwriters that they reached out to did not have their business in place and they could not sign the agreements because somebody's in jail, somebody's pissed off at somebody, somebody's, they can't agree to the numbers. And I had all that stuff in place. So I kept placing songs like crazy. Same thing with Degrassi. And then it reached a point with urban music and it's sad, but you know, Julie said earlier, get your business in straight because some of these companies want hip hop. They want rap songs. They want these Caribbean songs. They want soca. They want all the stuff in reggae. But the people that are creating it do not have their business straight. So they can so nobody can sign the agreements. So right. there's a lot of money that's going to the wrong people. Right. So so I, I say that. Get that stuff. And and that comes from just having those initial conversations. Is this gonna song gonna be fifty fifty? Okay. When the song's finished, then have that conversation and put it, you know, register it with so can. Then the, the next thing from there is publishing. Not everyone has to have their stuff published, but there's certain scenarios like in music for TV and film where they divide the fees half and half. Half goes to the publisher or and all the people involved in that, and then half goes to the owner and the songwriters. So if you have not assigned your portion of a song to a publisher, that money just sits somewhere else. Um, you know, that's something you can look into. I don't want to get into all that stuff here, but I'm just saying explore that. Don't just run out and go start a publishing company just because I said so, but explore that. And when you reach a point where you're about to start like placing music, then then look into it. And then, um, and yeah, um, like Byron's saying, split sheets, key. Like I said, at the end of, the, of your writing session, or at least when the song is finished, don't jump the gun because <laughs> sometimes people want to do split sheets before the song even has a name. Um, and I'm sure, Julie, you, you may have <laughs> experienced a few of those in writing sessions with published writers. They get all anxious and like, I wrote that, but we don't know the name of the song. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you get to a point where you've written a song, it's coming together. And as you start to mix and it really, you know, all the components are there intellectual property wise. And you say, hey, like, you know, are we cool? This 50 50? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I'm going to register. So again, you register with your people and, and things are good. Um, yeah. and, and again, and then that tags into like management too, where you, you know, the whole why you would need a manager. Sometimes those conversations between two creative peoples don't always go so well because right. somebody's too shy or awkward or I don't know what to say. That's where you, sometimes you need a manager that just doesn't go in and bully the situation. But like, you know, you, like you've had Chase as a manager in, in your past. Chase is like a really neutral. Okay, I'm not going to say Chase is the person, but you know, having a, a man. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like Chase. Yeah, um, yeah, sure. Having a manager that has a neutral personality but is knowledgeable is cool to come in and say, "Listen, um, I just did the song with such and such with Julie Black. Um, I think it's a fifty-fifty. Can you call her and, and organize it?" And then your manager will have a conversation with whoever the other person. I just said Julie, but like, hey, uh, this is what we did. Are we cool with this? Uh, well, no, but this is what it should be. This is what it should because your manager, you find a manager that's knowledgeable. And yeah. experienced and has personality, yeah. you know. I just jump in I on remember, that. Just jump in on oh, it. Go ahead. Only because um, I lately I've been starting to think about just words, being very intentional with my words, and so I'm like, do I need? What do I need? Like, and uh, you know, you could have a manager. That's kind of like the standard word term. But then I started thinking about representation. And the yep. word representation, because whomever is going before you or speaking on your behalf needs to represent your values, you, you and your brand, and your brand you know, all and of them, yeah. right? Your morals, your yep. ethics. They need to know for sure, even in their mind, it might be a yes, but in, if Julie fundamentally feels it's a no, it needs to be a no if I'm yeah. very convicted by it, right? So yeah, we like have your man Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was saying like your manager in, in this case, you know, not only having a good relationship needs to know Julie wouldn't like this. So no, but Julie might go for that. And you need to know that the person that's going in to bat for you knows you that well. It's right. kind of going on what you're saying. Your manager because you. your manager works for you. Just ma remember yeah. that. On today, <laughs> you can fire them. Life. The manager might make you think you work for them, right? Especially young artists. 
I mean, I've been in this business yeah. since I was 15. So at 14 years old, it would seem like my, I work for my manager. But really, mm -hmm. he and she and back then, they got a piece of what I make. I don't get a piece of what they make. So they exactly. work for me. They work for me. And, but yeah. you also have someone that's going to challenge you. You know, I'll use Chase as a, I'll always use Chase as, a, as an example. I am a lot of the performer I am today because he pushed me and he made sure that I knew how to use my mic stand. And that's your, that's your home base. You're safe there. You could like, there's so yeah. much, I'm from a whole other generation. I'm a very strong performer because of the foundation yes. of that, those instructions when I was young enough and agile, yeah. you know what I mean? To be, and, yeah. and you gotta be agile, emotionally, creatively agile, agility, it's important. So that you yeah. know that you're bendable and you'll try things, you don't have to break, but you definitely need to be able to bend. Okay. Yes. That's something that's very, very, very important in this business. It's a different day. If someone asks if there's a if there's virtual networking opportunities to meet music supervisors here in Canada, and and are they accessible? Are you are you in the know of any of that, there, um, Derek? Um, I can't speak on virtual opportunities, but they are literally out there. And what I suggest sometimes, excuse me, sorry, I'm too early. Um, Google watch some of the TV shows that actually play music similar to what you create. At the end of the show, you'll see the credits, pause it, write down, create a list of music supervisors that are within the, the realm of what you do. Do a little bit of homework because they don't like people just constantly hitting them up for no reason. But reach, you know, once you've Googled and created a list of a few, maybe five, 10 of them, um, Google them, look, find them on LinkedIn, their websites are there. Like you just, you just need to find their names. And once you do that, you send a polite email. Hi, I like the music that you place in such and such TV show. I think I have something that I can bring to the table. You know, Love here's five songs. Love that. You know, and, and you know, you do a polite, you do your homework because a lot of times as well, I've, I've done the same where I've reached out and, and, and they all tell me like, man, you wouldn't believe how many people send me some crap that has nothing to do with the TV shows I work on. That's annoying. So um, how do you get your beats in front of the right people? Uh, Latoya. Um, that's a part of it. I'll jump into that in terms of production, but in terms of TV shows, that's literally the no nonsense, <laughs> simple um, guerrilla approach. Google, look, watch your TV shows, pause, Google their names. Um, yeah, that's old school, but it's the right school because you're works. doing work, you're developing a database, and even every no is closer to your yes. So a lot of them don't like yeah. cold calls, don't like cold emails and cold this, that, but still the day will if come. Polite and simple. Yeah, polite and simple. Polite yeah, and like, simple. I'll give you one example, like uh, CSI, when it was big a couple of years back, I did the same. I paused and, and I, I was like, oh, wow, that's a big show, but let me reach out. I found him on LinkedIn and I, I gave like a one paragraph. Hey, I've got a lot of music. I, I, I like what you guys are doing. And I know it's, you, as a music supervisor, it's your choice. I like your taste. Um, is there anything I can do? And he, he's like, and he responded. I'm like, oh, shit, I got excited. I'm like, yeah. Music supervisors. And, but that's it, you know. Um, oh, yeah, and Byron's saying there's the Guild of Music Supervisors, um, which, yeah, there's a lot of music supervisors. So you could get names, but you still got to know, even if you just simply have the names of the music supervisors, and there's a lot here in Canada and in Toronto, um, you got to know what shows they're working on. So again, do your homework. But the do cool you. thing is that you build a list and you slowly build your relationships because that's a big thing too in this industry is personal relationships. Um, especially if, like for me, I, I can sit here all day long in my studio and just make music and email it out. I don't have to go anywhere. It, yeah. Hypothetically speaking. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah. Um, and and you, you sang the theme of that TV show. Yeah, uh, so that's actually it's a good, a good uh, segue because relationships, relationships get you far, right? So at the end of the day, um, knowing value versus currency. So when I did the, I acted in the theater production, and right. again, I'm gonna go back to the money. The money, the yeah. money was just I. <laughs> the money was I. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but the value was immeasurable. So yeah. saying yes to act and take a smaller role in that in the theater production, which I didn't know 16 years later would basically be what pr primed me for Caroline as a lead. You know what I mean? So recognizing mm -hmm. that 
like Trey Anthony, who wrote the, the theater production, we didn't yeah. know he was going to be favored with a TV show. That happened how long after? Yeah, and long so, after. Right, long after. So then, but she calls the squad. So knowing that if you position yourself in humility and with grace, yeah. you know what? Okay. And that's how I got that theme song. And so, and yeah. another CBC show theme song. And before you know it, I'm, there's various theme songs that yeah. my voice has been the voice of, right? So it's realizing that it's not, the bag may not big, may not be big every time, especially up front, but the yeah. relationships, the relationships, the same thing I could say, I was on eTalk for all these years as a correspondent, doing my correspondent thing on eTalk, right? Yeah. And through that, still putting out music, but through that, they bought the rights for Canadian Idol. And then I got on there, they asked me to be the mentor. So you see what I'm saying? It's all about yeah. really being humble and being ready. Yeah. If there's yeah, another, one, this is another one, this is a, a, a twist off of the uh, Debbie Allen. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. If you yeah. stay ready, you'll never have to yeah, get you ready. You love those things. Me too. <laughs> right? You'll be no, but that's, that's very true. Yeah, and, and even like something I said earlier, is, is following these opportunities because one door, whether it's a bad door or whatever, will always open up another because sometimes you're creating optics for yourself. Mm -hmm. And in the industry, you know, people don't always say things, but they see you. And that's I remember right. someone telling me that uh, way back. They're like, we, we see you. You know, so my name was on top, you know, not just me, but I, I now see people. I may not reach out to them. And sometimes when they do, they're like, no, we see you. Trust me. Like, I like to be open and transparent. So I'm like, yeah, we see you. Just keep doing what you're doing because sometimes opportunities open. But as well, me as a producer running around, you know, based in Toronto, trying to compete in the American and the Caribbean and Latin and, and especially that American market, um, I had to go down and be humble. And I'll give you one funny example, which turned out to one of my best, was when my manager was trying to bring me into L.A., right in the beginning, she was like, well, you need a name, a producer name. And she's like, you're going to shoot me. But um, I told them your name was Skippy something. <laughs> I'm like, what? You call me? She's like, no, they don't know you. Like, you're Derek Brent. Like, in L.A., they don't know you. So, you know, most of the producers here have a name. So we, get, we I couldn't think. Of, I was on the phone. And I thought of Skippy Jack or some stupid so I went down to L.A. to work with Giros, who's Diane Warren's main producer, other than Foster, as Skippy Jump or whatever the hell the name was. And I was just like, oh my God. Stop but, it. <laughs> I was like, I'm a producer already. I'm an engineer. Why am I going there as some cheap? So I went down, humbled myself. <laughs> and I, re I realized from that experience, in, we, we recorded the song for the Pokemon soundtrack, was the first one. I learned so much in a week working under Yi, I realized, wow, if I went here as a producer engineer, I would have flopped because mm. the, the realm was so big. So I just humbled and learned. And then what I did, Diane Warren noticed what mm. I did to one of her songs because Diane Warren writes her songs on guitar or piano, sends the cassette <laughs> across, and then Yi produces it. But Yi Roshi was 60 years old. So they hired me to come in with all the funky drums to do the drum programming and all the funky programming. And it's like this chain of like the old guys get the gigs, but then they utilize the younger guys. So I'm like, okay, this is how it works. I'm skippy right. jump. <laughs> but then when Diane Warren noticed, she came to the studio. It's like, I like what you did with the innocence thing. And I want you to come and do a couple other th songs. I'm like, okay, cool. So these doors opened up just from me humbling and letting myself be called skippy jump. And then I'm like, actually, my name's Derek. So, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then, it, then you know what I mean? But these yeah. are like going on your things. It's like one door led to another. I mean, there's a bunch of others in between this one situation. But then yeah. I ended up doing other records. We did the Christina Aguilera. We did Brandy. We did a bunch of things. And I was just a programmer learning. But then when I got that whole formula down, I'm like, okay, I can do this shit. Hello. You know, Look at that's like look at that education. Look at that education right there. People yeah. pay university, yeah. college, whatever, you know, Trevis, whatever. Like, look at that hands-on value. Yeah, no, I, 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 and it's immeasurable. And then I came back to Toronto and started, you know, really developing an artist and things like that, and being able to to bring something to the table. Mash up the idea. place. You came a <laughs> mash up the place. Well, that's Toronto's Toronto and our secret sauce. This is <laughs> yeah, man. 
it's good. I know we have about 12 minutes left. There's been, if you have any questions, okay, everybody, question. please drop them in the chat. Um, this is awesome. I really appreciate this opportunity. Sometimes like, we live our experience really close to it. So to be able to audibly speak it out loud, it's really, really um, I think it's a really good thing. Um, I was going to say something else. What was it? One last thing to say too after you. Yeah. No, go on, go on. If you remember yours, go on. I have to, you know, this um, is where Okay, so as a producer, um, owning studios and all this other crap I could brag about, um, my biggest records were done with one keyboard and an MPC or something. Um, so I've always, as a technical person, valued knowing your shit, whatever that is. And even, you know, as a singer, knowing your craft. Um, so I've also loved to travel into other territories and record. And so sometimes I'll pick up a microphone, my backpack, and go. So I wanted to show one of these videos of me in Cuba, Ooh. where this is a project that's going to come out this year. And I, I, I like to, people to see that you don't need to go into these big, big studios. Just do things proper. And um, Devon, I don't know if you're there, but I, I just wanted to show this one quick video of this is how we do it. Like we yeah. go into the, go to wherever we go, you know, as a Caribbean person, we just make, make shit work what's around us that's just how we learn and, and awesome. one of the things that we tapped on yesterday is i think that's one of the secret sauce of of toronto sound is that a lot of us are caribbean blooded and we grew up listening to soul and reggae and this and then you go to school and you listen to led zeppelin and rush and black sabbath and spando ballet and all these things and i think that comes out at us <laughs> as oh, canadians yeah. um as canadian musicians and singers and songwriters and all that stuff so you know, I still gravitate to Caribbean music and I always fuse it like Cardi. I mean, we did that way back, Cardi and all that stuff. Americans don't get it, but we do. It's normal for us. You know, when you yep. turn on a chum, they're playing soca music underneath the, we the, the weather. Like, this, this is Canada. Yeah. Um, so, um, this one record, I just grab a microphone. We went to Cuba and I've done this three trips, but there's just one, one sample of it to see um, how simple. You can go do your thing, but still make big records. Um, okay. Can you play the, the video? Yeah, they're ready. Huh? Cubita. Cubita. Cubita la bella. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I miss you so much. Ah! Yeah. Hey, well, we got to create a, a Latin club. So, you know, that's that's a really nice microphone sitting on top of a fridge, being held down by a huge bottle of Havana Club. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so these are these are the type of projects that I'm I'm getting into. We're you know infusing like Toronto Latin like. It's two guys. One lives in Cambridge, Ontario, and the other lives in Cuba and doesn't speak a lick of English. So just imagine but the you sessions. Speak, that. You speak music. Exactly. Music that's, that's part is of my the point. universal language, right? Yes. Music is the universal so, language. That's not, yeah. Do you remember what you were going to say? I don't want to run out um, I don't, but I think, but I'm going to just say something else because I maybe my mom would say, like, maybe you're going to lie. Someone, someone on here was bigging up my accent. Sometimes <laughs> I don't even hear that I have an accent, even though I'm born in Toronto. But um, youngest of mine, all my siblings are Jamaican. So anyway, so um, but so over this past year, couple years actually, like I've had this whole record that I've been making on and off. Um, after my mom passed away, it really um, it made me have to really look at my life and and really ask myself who who am I without my mom here physically, and so um, I always kept this kind of dream of running in stilettos around like O2 Arena and Air Canada Center. Like I love being fit. And at one point I was, cause I've been an athlete my whole life. And then 
I realized that there's only a handful, and this is for my, all my artists, but especially the females, there's a handful of artists that are considered fit in the business. It'd be like Tina Turner, Madonna, Sierra, Jennifer, um, Jennifer Lopez, you know, Pink. I'm just going off the top of my head. Like when you think Beyonce, you know, like you're like, okay, that person's fit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that was important for me to, to, to be fit and stay fit, but also help others find their, find their power. And so I, um, over this past year, I, I started a new company called the power of step and it's just straight up old school step yes. aerobic, but, um, yes. this, I've been following this, it. Amazing no, stuff. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. There have been people that have come off of antidepressants and off of, you know, thyroid medicine and insulin and all these preventable diseases um, yeah. through step and through music. I found the creativity when I haven't when I when everything shut down and then I didn't have the I didn't I wasn't feeling creative to write songs. I started feeling creative to make up step routines and got certified. And so now we're running this Black History Month initiative called Standing in the Gap. And um, and we're 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 supporting the Jane and Finch um, Boys and Girls Club because there are many kids that you know unfortunately they don't even have strong Wi-Fi. You know their parents are really struggling right now. And so uh, the flyers up if you want to support. Uh, it's a 28 day stepathon. You don't have to step. You could use a tape or you could just donate. But um, all every month we're honoring a historian. You could see the flyer there all over the world, past, present, and future. And it's really near and dear to my heart because from the pain of losing my mom, I found passion and purpose. And I start to start asking myself as well, like, you know, if people don't know me as Julie Black the singer, then who am I? Like, it, like that's, that's what I do, it's not who I am. And um, if there were some words to just kind of leave you guys with, is really, really start thinking about, ask yourself this question. Who are you? What? What, who are you? But also, sure, sure. What, what on earth am I here for? What on earth am I here for? Mm -hmm. And, and, and kind of sit with it. Sit with it. Because th this is the day, we're not going back to any sort of normal, any sort of, we're not going back to anything. Like we are living in this through this pandemic and it's really now gonna be about fundamentally on the in, it's an inside job. All that we're doing is an inside job. And as Derek spoke about earlier about mental health and you know, and that's that's it's been going on for so long. Now it's it's on the surface and we're talking about it and Bell let's talk and we all this stuff is going on, we, you know, really need to support people in mental health. Let me tell you this. Mental health is even PMS. Okay. <laughs> mental health, all sadness, mental health. So let's not think that it doesn't affect us or impact us. Everybody's impacted by mental health. But what I will say is that we, I'm pointing, I'm hype, is that we have access to the natural high called dopamine. And even if you're just dancing, turn on music and dance. Link up with your brain. If someone asks, how do you get up? How do you get your beats to somebody? Find an artist. I linked up with Young mm -hmm. Pete and, and the Soul Diggers and Socks and you know, Derek's here. Yeah. It's like, as an artist, I need an outfit. I need a producer to give me an outfit, right? Social media. So, social media, absolutely, right? So anyway, I wanted to just it's just um, share that, that yeah, I, I would love to invite you all to, to, to come on this movement uh, with the power of STEM, standing in the gap. And we're here standing in the gap. And, and we are not telling you, we're not here to speak at you. We're here to also learn from you. It's each one teach one. I'm excited to learn from all of you who are on here today. And definitely hit me up on Instagram. Uh, I'm very active on Instagram. I eat. I do everything on Instagram. I made a decision because I, I used to be, I used to think social media was annoying because it's it's an extra job kind of. But then I had to change my mindset. Pandemic hit and I said, you know what? Okay, social media, you guys are my chosen family. And it just changed my mindset. So every time I go on, I feel good. Like I'm, I'm hooking up with my family. And it's 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 been amazing to hook up with brands. We don't have enough time to talk about this too, but there's there's a whole other thing beyond music, knowing that yeah. hey, I'm in fitness, all these food companies and fit money is money is money is money. If you get the bag from <laughs> you know from Whole Foods, if Whole Foods is gonna give you a check, you write your album with the Whole Foods money. Yeah. <laughs> you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. <laughs> money. money is money. Yeah. So I wanna just thank uh, everyone. Eric, I wanna give you these last two minutes here. So that you know, yeah. Go on. Um, I just want to address a question. Um, 
I don't want to say it wrong, but Sofinari, you asked about uh, whether you should stay independent or get a deal and at what point um, get management. Um, I was told this once in terms of management. I remember when I used to go to New York and chase and chase and chase. I, I was connected to uh, Puffy's manager. And he actually spent some time with me on the phone. He says, listen, um, I don't have anything to manage. So <laughs> when you have something to manage, hit me up. Because really, like, as a manager, like, on, on the bigger level, I want to nurture and develop your career and handle your career, like, handle the negotiations, handle the this. But until you have something to handle and manage, you know, maybe deal with a, someone closer or smaller that can just, you know, like a friend manager. But then when you kind of get to a point, then you get a business manager. So, I mean, the, the simple answer is when you have something to manage, but it's up to you to build it. And that was one of my big lessons. I'm like... I want to get a manager. I want to get a manager, but that was the thing. I had to go back to square one, build what I'm doing as a producer, or in other case, an artist. You know, and like Julie said earlier, go on, you know, social media, perform, be out there because we see you. Um, yeah. And then in terms of in terms of the independent thing, there's no one answer to staying independent or major. Um, to me, um, I'm I'm independent, but Not you independent. Know, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but I feel like there's there is a benefit to being on a major label if you can get there. Yes. So my again, so my general answer to that would be release your records independently, use the tune core, the CD babies and stuff like that. Put singles out so that people can notice you. And that is your kind of like your leverage into what you know, whether you you know get signed by a major or not. Because even Nikki, I remember I used to see her on MySpace, Nikki Minaj, and you know, all these artists were doing social media and became something and then got noticed. So right. you, you, so start start by releasing records. Yeah, Singles. there's a couple. There's a little bit of housekeeping before we go um, in our yep. chat. Uh, so yeah, there is a there is a contest. There is a contest happening. So if you guys post a video of yourselves um, performing, dancing, doing something, performing, I guess, a tag Black Diamond Ball to you, and the best performance is gonna win a pair of Puma shoes. Okay. So that's awesome. You know, we love free things. Uh, there's also an opportunity for an emerging artist to perform at the showcase before the Black Diamond Ball. So there's opportunities. See these opportunities? Seize the opportunities. Sing a 30 second song and tag us. There it is. Okay. Win a, win a, win a pair. Maybe it's a Julie Black song. Hey, holla. <laughs> uh, and uh, in conclusion, someone asked what's the best way to get to Broadway. I would say the best way to get to Broadway is to get to the Elgin Theater, the Princess of Wales, the, you know, all of the theaters here in Toronto. Groom your craft. Canada is the best training camp ever. It is, oh, it is, it is right? definitely. Whole yep. other workshop on that, but what I can say for sure, I don't care who has pyro, I will sing the mess around you. And that's because I know I'm the best at what I do. I'm not saying I'm better than you. I'm saying I'm the best Julie. So yeah. I'm in a- well, you know, but that's part of your Jamaican and Caribbean background. Like, like my mom would say, do not be around a country that celebrates mediocrity. And she pushed the shit out of me when I was young. Mm. You know, and, and I'm, excuse my language, but you know, that's what it is. Like when you grow yeah. up in a Caribbean household, that belt comes out real quick. You know, yeah. so all excellent. The workshop, all the workshop on the belt. Yeah. Right? 1102, Ex Caribbean excellence. people also tend to be late. So let's end on time so you guys can have the rest of your Saturday. There's a networking yes. opportunity coming up. As well, um, beat leasing. Uh, someone's asking about that. Um, I think I don't do it, but I know a lot of people that do, and they do well at it. I think it's just it's genre specific. Like a lot of the the hip hop guys, they make beats like in twenty minutes, so it makes sense for them to throw them out there, and they don't handle a lot of their business, so they don't care about missing out on the song songwriting component of those songs that go out there. But some people that do, um, I don't. You know, yeah, it depends. It's context. Yeah. Okay, y'all. So this is the end of the workshop. Derek, love you so much. We are going to draw. Likewise. Keep networking. Black Diamond Ball, you know how it is. Congratulations, Sean and crew. Thank you, Elizabeth, yes. Corey, all the man them. Thank you, everybody. Those, Thank uh, you, everyone. Thank you for Any questions. Thanks questions? for the invitation. Come on, Elizabeth, everybody. <laughs> um, and reach us out to either one of us, me or Julie, social media. That's right. And Derek, pick me up on the side. We need to link back up. It's been too long. All right. that Latin, that Latin urban, that Latin urban, urban yeah. Afro beats, dance hall yes. meets. I need something to step to. 
Hey. Okay. Done. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you see that? It's like that. Okay, y'all. Done. Yeah. All right. Okay, See you guys.